Hello and welcome to the Whole Council Devotional for Monday, January 22nd. This week we begin with the last verse of chapter 2 in Genesis. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Adam and Eve are innocent and without sin. They have not yet eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and so don't even have a knowledge of sin or of shame. The condition of Adam and Eve here reminds me a bit of that of Moses in Exodus 34. So he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the children of Israel came near. And he gave them his commandments, all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, Then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Here in Exodus, Moses' face shines so brightly after being in the presence of God that he throws a sheet over his head and invents the very first ghost costume. Except, instead of the costume being scary, the man himself frightens the people and wears the costume so that the people aren't scared. Adam and Eve were likewise spiritually clothed in the presence of God. And some have conjectured that they were physically clothed in his presence, just as Moses was. While their innocence meant that their nakedness caused them no shame, it's also quite possible that they were literally clothed in God's glory. Let's continue in Genesis. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. While Genesis is not really a book of poetry, but a book of history, we see here the inherent poetic nature of the Bible, as the word arom, the nakedness of the man and his wife, is contrasted with the Hebrew word arum, the cunningness of the serpent. Although I can't give you any real profound truth in the similarity of these two words and the way they are used to contrast mankind and the serpent, I believe there is an important concept in this fact about the way the Bible is written. Proverbs 25.2 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. In Revelation 1, John writes that Jesus has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. Proverbs tells us, then, that it is the glory of God to conceal things, but that it is our glory to search out that truth. The Bible isn't a book of do's and don'ts, or a quaint book of stories that lay out the development of a religion. It is the inspired word of the Almighty, designed to reveal him to us as and if we diligently search and study it. Yet because most of us rarely spend the time, effort, and energy to diligently seek out the truth, we often fall into the trap that Eve falls into. Looking back at chapter 2, we see that the commandment to not eat from the tree was given to Adam before Eve was even around. Did Adam not explain the commandment well enough to his wife? Did she not pay close enough attention? Perhaps Adam or Eve added their own understanding to what God had said. Regardless, we see in verse 3 that Eve doesn't fully know God's commandment as she adds the prohibition on touching it. 
Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with not touching the fruit. If you don't plan on eating the fruit, you probably shouldn't be handling it, and it's probably not a bad idea to stay far away from it. Still, I think it speaks to a misunderstanding and misapplication of God's commandment in a similar way that we do today. We're told not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but some take that and turn it into this legal requirement and proclaim it to be a mortal sin to miss church. We're told to guard our hearts, but some turn that into a prohibition on television and movies. We recently discussed how some groups turn the day you go to church into obedience or sin. I know of a Pentecostal denomination that teaches that divorce is fine as long as you don't remarry. Delving deeply into God's Word isn't something for end-time crazies, for preachers, teachers, and theologians, or an unnecessary luxury when you have some extra time and are already living out the basic principles of Jesus. It's a crucial step in knowing God and an important safeguard against our natural tendency as humans to interpret things according to our own understanding. Let me leave you with a couple of verses from Proverbs that I feel express this truth very well. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in Him. Do not add to His words, lest He rebuke you and you be found a liar. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Have a great day.